Sutra, after Hui Neng took leave of the patriarch, he set out on foot for the south. In two months, he reached the Taoyu Mountains. The fifth patriarch returned to the monastery, but for several days he did not enter the hall. The assembly was concerned and went to ask, Has the master some slight illness or problem? There is no illness, came the reply, but the rope and drama have already gone south. Who received the transmission? they asked. The able one obtained it, said the patriarch. The assembly then understood. And soon several hundred people took up pursuit, all hoping to steal the rope and bow. Commentary The Sith Patriarch left the Fifth Patriarch, no longer attending upon the High Master or making offerings to him. He walked south from Ping Mao Mountain and in a little over two months. He finally reached the Taoyu Mountain range, which forms the border between Nanshong and Kuang Tung. The fifth patriarch returned to his room. For many days, he did not go into the home to speak drama or take his meals. The assembly was curious. Hi, master, they said. You're not ill, are you? You may all disperse, said the fifth patriarch, because I no longer have the Buddha drama. The rope and drama have gone south. I intend to rest now. I am going to retire. Who received the transmission? They asked. The able one, said the patriarch. He who was able to obtain it, whoever the able one is, he got it. When this announcement was made, there were those in the assembly who had keen intelligence, one of them being Dao Master Fa Chu. He was one of the ten people to whom the fifth patriarch gave instructions before he entered Nirvana, telling them, Each of you go to a different direction and be a Dharma host. But now when Fa Chu heard the fifth patriarch say that the able one had obtained the transmission, he cried out, No, that must mean the southern barbarian has got the Dharma. How strange! The able one refers to Hui Neng, able Neng was his name. Word spread and soon everyone knew. They all objected violently. No, no, they shouted. How can it be? Let's go take it from him right now. Several hundred powerful people ran after Hui Neng. Consider the situation. The fifth patriarch had transmitted the drama to a barbarian and the entire assembly was resentful. How could you give it to him? They said. We have been following you for so many years. Why didn't you give it to us? They thought to themselves, the patriarch's brain must be adult. adult. How else could he give the drama to such a hick? How can he become the sick patriarch? We should get back the rope and bow by force. Sutra, one be sure, Hui Ming, a coarse-natured man whose lay name had been Chen had formerly been a fourth-class military official. He was intent in his search and ahead of the others. When he had almost caught up with Wei Neng, the latter tossed the rope and bow onto a rock, saying, This rope and bow are tokens of faith. How can they be taken by force? Wei Neng then hid in a thicket. When Hui Ming arrived, he tried to pick them up, but found he could not move them. He cried out, Cantivator, Cantivator, I have come for the Dharma, not for the rope. Hui Neng then came out and sat cross-legged on a rock. Hui Ming made obeisance and said, I hope that the Cantivator will teach the Dharma for my sake. Hui Neng said, Since you have come for the Dharma, you may put aside all conditions. Do not give rise to a single thought, and I will teach you, teach it to you clearly. After a time, Hui Neng said, With no thoughts of good and with no thoughts of evil, at just this moment, what is superior one Hui Meng's original face? At these words, Hui Ming was greatly enlightened. Commentary Bishu Hui Ming 
was cross and uneducated. He never opened his mouth unless it was to scold someone, and if they refused to listen, he beat them. He could smash a rock of several hundred pounds with one blow. With this extraordinary strength, he became a fourth-class army officer. Kui Ming had one peculiar trait: his feet were covered with feathers, which enabled him to run fast. He could travel sixty miles a day, compared to the ordinary man's thirty. His feathered feet and great strength carried him far ahead of the others. As he flew along, his mind raced. I'll get the rope and bow, and then it will be mine. It belongs to the strongest man. Then, when Hui Neng saw this big, crude, feather-footed pursuer, he was a bit frightened. Although he had obtained the drama, he had just begun to cultivate and did not yet have great spiritual power. He shouted into empty space, "This rope and bow are symbols of faith. Of the faith, how can you take them by force?" How can there be any dispute? What do you think? Kui Ming had actually intended to grab the rope and bow and run, but he could not move them. Why do you suppose he couldn't move them? After all, he was so strong. He could have smashed the bow to smithereens with a single blow and have ripped ripped the rope to shreds. Yet, for all his strength and as light as the rope was, he couldn't budge it. This indicates that there were dharma protectors, gods, dragons, and others of the eight divisions present guarding the rope and bow. Since he couldn't grab them, he thought, "That's strange. I can't use force here. Ah, I'd ask for the dharma instead." Had he truly been seeking the way, he wouldn't. Had first tried to grab the rope and bow, but would immediately have said, "Cantivita, cantivita! I come for the drama, not for the rope and bow." Don't you think my opinion about this is logically sound? Hui Neng emerged and sat in lotus position on a rock. Hui Ming bowed to the sixth patriarch. He understood now that the drama of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas cannot be taken by force. You say you come for the drama," said Wei Neng. "Really? Did you really come for the drama and not to steal the rope and bow? Fine. Put aside all conditions. Put your mind to rest. Stop grasping at conditions, and then I will explain the drama clearly for you." For seven or eight minutes, the great master sat waiting. Neither he nor Wei Ming gave rise to a single thought. Everything stopped. Not even the ghosts and spirits knew what was happening. Everything was empty. Hui Ming was not giving rise to thought. He was not thinking north, south, east, or west. So Hui Neng said, with no thoughts of good and no thoughts of evil, at just that moment, what is superior means original phase. Since the sixth patriarch was at the time still a layman. He respectfully addressed Huai Ming as "superior one." The word "what" means "who." In the Diana School, we meditate on the question, "Who is reciting the Buddha's name?" When Huai Ming heard the word "what," he became enlightened. "Oh," he said, "originally it is just this way." Hearing these words, have you become enlightened? Sutra Huai Ming asked further, apart from the secret speech and secret meanings just spoken, is there yet another secret meaning? Huai Neng said, "What has been spoken to you is not secret. If you turn the illumination inward, the secret is with you." Huai Ming said, although Huai Ming was at Huang Mei, he had not yet awakened to his original phase. Now that he has been favored with this instruction, he is like one who drinks water and knows of himself, knows for himself whether it is cold or warm. The cultivator is now Hui Ming's master. If you feel that way, said Hui Neng, then you and I have the same master, 
Huang may protect yourself well. Huai Ming asked further, Where should I go now? Huai Neng said, Stop at Yuan and tell at Meng. Commentary All the city patriarchs pursuers were greedy, but Huai Ming was the worst. He had just seen his original face. He had just become enlightened, but he wasn't satisfied. He wanted to know if he had missed anything. Are there any more secrets? He asked. Is there something even more wonderful? What I have said is not the most miraculous and wonderful thing, said the sixth patriarch. What is most important is that you turn the light back around and illuminate inward, so that you may see the wonderful secret which is within you. It is all within you. It is not here with me. Great Master said Hui Ming, I wish to take you as my teacher, if that is how you feel, said the sixth patriarch. We have the same teacher, Huang Mei. We both have the fifth patriarch's Dharma transmission and are Dharma brothers. That is fine. Now take good care of the Dharma and don't allow it to become extinct. It was not until three years after this encounter with the patriarch that Hui Ming went to Meng Mountain in Yuan District. There he met a ghost who, in his last life, had been a top-ranking scholar under the imperial examination system. The ghost composed a poem and sang it to Hui Ming. Still, still, barren waste, a dream. Then now triumph, lost lazy thought measures. White grass, idle flowers picked, how many? Bitter rain, sour wind, how many broken hearts? At night with a firefly light, I come and go. At dawn, the cock growls. I hide away my form. Regret from the first not telling the mind ground. Two streams are caused to fall. Green mountain tears. Seeing the ghost blight, Hui Ming explained the drama to the ghost and took him across. Ever since then, there has been the ceremony of Meng Mountain, which is performed to take ghosts across and liberate them. Sutra Hui Ming bowed and left. Reaching the foot of the mountain, he said to the pursuers, Up above there is only a rocky, trackless height. We must find another path. The pursuers all agreed. Afterwards, Hui Ming changed his name to Tao Ming to avoid using Hui Neng's first name. Commentary After receiving instruction from the sixth patriarch, Feather Footed Hui Ming went down the mountain and told the pursuers that he had not seen the sixth patriarch. Hui Ming usually told the truth, and so everyone believed him now, even though he was lying. Actually, this is not. This was not a lie, but an expedient device used to protect the sixth patriarch from those who, unlike Hui Ming, had not received the drama and therefore still wished to kill the sixth patriarch. Hui Ming did not presume to be his master's equal. He changed his name from Hui Ming to Tao Ming to avoid using the patriarch's first name. Sutra. Hui Neng arrived at Tao Tzu, where he was again pursued by men with evil intentions. To avoid difficulty, he went to Su Hui and lived among hunters for 15 years, at times teaching drama to them in an appropriate manner. The hunters often told him to watch their nets, but whenever he saw beings who were still living, he released them. At meal time, he cooked vegetables in the pot alongside the meat. When he was questioned about it, he would answer, I only eat vegetables alongside the meat. Commentary Shen Xiao still wanted to kill the sixth patriarch and steal the patriarchate. Hui Neng escaped to Su Hui, Zhu Hui, the present Xin Hui where he lived with a band of hunters for 15 years. Who would have suspected that a Buddhist would choose to live with hunters? No one. Shen Xiu's party searched far and wide, but they never found him. 
Some say the great master lived with the hunters for 16 years, but their calculation includes the time he spent coming and going. He actually lived with them for only 15 years. For lunch, the great master gathered white vegetables on the mountain and cooked them in the pot beside the meat. If someone asked him, why are you doing that? He said, I only eat the vegetables. I don't eat meat. Sutra. One day, Huynam thought, the time has come to spread the drama. I cannot stay in hiding forever. Accordingly, he went to Fa Sing Monastery in Guangzhou, where Dharma Master Yin Sung was giving lectures on the Nirvana Sutra. At that time, there were two bishops who were discussing the topic of the wind and a flag. One said, the wind is moving. The other said, the flag is moving. They argued incessantly. Kuei Neng stepped forward and said, The wind is not moving, nor is the flag. Your mice, cancers are moving. Everyone was startled. Dharma Master Ying Tsung invited him to take a seat of honor and sought to ask him about the hidden meaning. Seeing that Kuei Neng's exposition of the true principles was concise, and to the point and not based on written words, Yin Sung said, The cultivator is certainly no ordinary man. I heard long ago that Hui Huang Mei's rope and bow had come south. Cultivator, is it not you? Hui Neng said, I dare not presume such a thing. Yin Sung then made obeisance and requested that the transmitted rope and bow be brought forth and shown to the assembly. Commentary The Great Master went to Guangzhou, the Fasting Monastery, now called Guangxiao Monastery, where Dharma Master Ying Tsung was lecturing on the Maha Paranivana Sutra, which the Buddha spoke just before entering Nirvana. At the monastery, the Master met the two monks arguing over the topic of the wind and the flag. One said the wind moved, the other said that the flag moved, and he told them, You are both wrong, neither the wind nor the flag is moving, your minds are moving. If your minds were not moving, then neither the wind nor the flag would move. Everyone was astonished to hear this layman speak in such a wonderful and mysterious way. Jing Tsung asked him, and you the holder, the holder of Huang Mei's robe and bow, I'm, un I'm unworthy of such a title, the master said modestly. Ying Tsung knew, however, that the great master was only being polite. Ying Tsung recognized Layman Bu as the sixth patriarch. So try, he further asked, how was Huang Mei's doctrine transmitted? There was no transmission, replied Wei Neng. We merely discussed seeing the nature. There was no discussion of Tiana Samadhi or liberation. Ying Sung asked, Why was there no discussion of Tiana Samadhi or liberation? Wei Neng said, These are dualistic dramas. They are not the Buddha drama. The Buddha drama is a drama of non dualism. Ying Sung asked further, what is this Buddha Dharma, which is the Dharma of non-dualism? Hui Neng said, The Dharma Master has been lecturing the Nirvana Sutra, which says that to understand the Buddha nature is the Buddha Dharma, which is the Dharma of non-dualism. As Khao Hui Tia Wang Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, Thus violating the four serious prohibitions, committing the five rebellious acts or being an Ishantika and the like cut off the good rules and the Buddha nature. The Buddha replied, There are two kinds of good rules, the first permanent, the second impermanent. The Buddha nature is neither permanent nor impermanent. Therefore, it is not cut off. That is what is meant by non-dualistic, the first is good and the second is not good. The Buddha nature is neither good nor bad. That is what is meant by non-dualistic. 
Common people think of the heaps and realms as dualistic. The wise man comprehends that they are non-dualistic in nature. The non-dualistic nature is the Buddha nature. Hearing this explanation, Ying Tsung was delighted. He joined his palms and said, My explanation of sutras is like broken tile, whereas your discussion of the meaning kind so is like pure gold. He then shaved Hui Neng's head and asked Hui Neng to be his master. Accordingly, under that body tree, Hui Neng explained the Tung Shang Dhamma Door. Commentary The four serious prohibitions are killing, stealing, lying, and sexual misconduct. The five rebellious acts are matricide, patricide, killing on a heart, shedding the blood of a Buddha, and breaking up the harmony of the Sangha. What happens to the gurus and the Buddha nature of one who commits such offenses? Ichantika is a Sanskrit word which may be explained as meaning of incomplete faith. Are the gurus and the Buddha nature of Ichantika cut off? Kalaupei to a Wang Bodhisattva asked the Buddha these questions because he mistook gurus for the Buddha nature itself. In his answer, the Buddha makes it clear that gurus are not the Buddha nature because the great master obtained the drama from the fifth Pachyak at Tongshan, East Mountain. It is called the Tongshan Dharma Door. Sutra Khoi Neng obtained the drama at Tongshan and has undergone much suffering, his life hanging as if by a thread. Today in this gathering of the magistrate and officials, of Bhikshus, Bhikshunis, Taoists and laymen, there is not one of you who is not here because of accumulated ages of karmic conditions. Because in past lives, you have made offerings to the Buddhas and planted gurus in common. You now have the opportunity to hear the certain teaching, which is a cause of obtaining the Dharma. This teaching has been handed down by former sages. It is not Hui Neng's own wisdom. You who wish to hear the teaching of the former sages should first purify your minds. After hearing it, cast aside your doubts and that way you will be no different from the sages of the past. Commentary First, the Sikh Vajra concludes the narrative of his life. We are in America who are so fortunate to hear this sutra explained have also for ages established common karmic conditions by making offerings to the Buddhas. The Dharma is transmitted from former sages, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. It is not my own wisdom, said Hui Neng. If you listen to me carefully, it will be just as if you were listening to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas speaking. Sutra, hearing this Dharma, the entire assembly was delighted, made obeisance and withdrew.